Today, Bernie gets a bunch of upgrades. So like I said in the last video, we ordered a bunch of stuff for Bernie. So we got some replacement parts and safety things. We also got some really big upgrades. We're gonna open everything up and go through it right now. We'll start off with a new transmission blanket. Very, very thankful for the last one. Got a fresh one of these, so we can put this around the transmission from Salty once we get that out set in here. Also uh, grabbed a new neutral safety switch. Or you guys remember this was all bent, so a new shifter cable and dipstick tube since this is all the stuff it destroyed when the transmission got broke. All right, so one of the other big upgrades that April's gonna open up real quick is this Circle D converter. That thing is pretty heavy. Yes, it is. It's like Christmas. <laughs> it is like Christmas. Oh boy, so got some swag in here, but the, the real important part is this right here. Since the very get, I've been thinking that after the very first burnout with Bernie that it needed a custom torque converter. And well, now we have one. I hit up the guys at Circle D and we got a nice build tune race custom converter oh, made wow. exactly for Bernie. This thing is a billet, nine and a half inch. So this is just as fancy as what I have like in the Camaro. And I can't believe that we have something like this for a freaking burnout truck. This should be crazy. The one in the truck was set up for like a light turbo combo. This is going to be close to hopefully 46 to 5,000 stall. But I hit up the guys. I said, hey, I need a burnout converter. Let's just try something and see what happens. Hopefully hit it. If not, we'll restall it. But not having a lot of burnout data out there, we're going to have to figure something out with this converter and try to get the best converter we can for Bernie to help him do even better burnouts. As you guys know, this truck had a problem. It didn't want to do as good of second gear burnouts as it could. It kind of wanted to lug the truck down. So with this thing, hopefully it rips even harder in second gear. So it's really sick that this has all three bolt patterns milled into it. You don't have to use nuts on the back side or anything. And it's set up for either flex plate that you decide to use. This will be awesome. If we do have an issue with this, since it is all billet and all just a really nice converter, you can always send this back to them, cut it open. They can restall it and send it right back. When you buy a converter like this, you're not just buying it for, you know, one time use. This thing can pretty much last forever because if the truck changes and this thing ever maybe gets a blower on it, we'll just have them restall it for a blower. Okay, next. What are we opening? Opening Alex's favorite thing in the world, suspension parts. Loads of fun. Loads of fun. As you guys know, in the last video, we talked about Bernie rolling over, coming into the pit, looking at all the skid cars over in Australia. They have a very stiff suspension. So I thought it'd be awesome to have a fully adjustable suspension on Bernie so we can start learning how and what we want the truck to do inside the burnout pit. So we hit up our friends at QA1. I said, what do you think will work well? And they actually have a kit, coilovers in the front with tubular A-arms that also changes the geometry of the truck a little bit. And then in the rear, we're gonna have double adjustable shocks. So my plan is to pretty much click this thing all the way tight, get a real stiff suspension on this truck and see what type of burnouts it does. And then we can adjust from there. I'm guessing that this is the rear shocks. Yeah, so see, these will be super nice. Double adjustable so we can play with the compression and rebound in the back of the truck. And just, I'm, I'm guessing we're gonna want everything super tight on this, but if for some reason you want it somewhat loose, we have that adjustability in these. Croc life. Croc life, huh? Croc life. Getting down today. Two wheel drive. <laughs> you got them in two wheel. Ready to do some burnouts. Two wheel or four wheel, Alex? I don't know. Alex is a four wheeler. <laughs> there are some of the suspension arms. So these, I mean, if you look at the stock suspension on this thing, it is. It's old and, well, it's a $350 truck to begin with, so let's not forget this. And it's getting, well, more than that worth of A-arms on this truck. So it's going to be pretty cool. We'll get this all installed here in a little bit. need my handy-dandy Kniff, or I mean, flat <laughs> screwdriver. I need to sharpen my screwdriver. So this must be the coilovers for the front here. Ooh. Wow. That's nice. a big spring. And here is the coil over for the front. So that's what these springs will go for. Look cute little guys. They're not, they're not super long, but again, this will also with the, what's nice about a coil over is that you can lower the truck just based on the coil over. So you have full adjustability, which we're going to talk about needing here in just a little bit. But this is kind of part of the plan is being able to fully adjust the front suspension on this truck. I can't believe Bernie's going to literally have nicer suspension. I mean, the Camaro has nice double adjustable shocks, but it still has stock A-arms and everything. And now Bernie's going to just have next level compared to even that. I can't believe the burnout truck is becoming nicer than <laughs> the Camaro. But in the future, the Camaro will get some upgrades. We're just, we're doing some burnout things right now. And the big boy arms. So this looks like these are the lowers. 
So the upper and lower, so full tubular front suspension with coilovers. The front suspension on this truck is just gonna be insane now. So one of the last things I wanted to do for Bernie was get some new, bigger, wider front rims for this thing. So we actually got these same little SSR spikes, uh, but these are slightly different. These are now a 17 by eight instead of a 15 by seven. Let's see what these look like here. Maybe, there we go. Definitely a bit bigger and a little bit wider. The offset should put the inside of the rim about the same. So the plan is with the bigger rim is to put a little bit lower profile, but also a little wider. Will help the truck steer inside the pit and uh, help give it some stability up front, especially with the new suspension, lower it down and everything else. There is something I'm gonna be worried about though with the zoomies. I don't know how low we can get the truck, but we're about to find out. Fire Clyde up and get it backed out so we can gain some room underneath the lift for some parts. Still holding the brake? Holding the brake. Are you sure you're holding the brake? didn't feel like it for a second. Well, I wonder if that wheel doesn't have as good brakes as the other side. Maybe that's part of my problem. You already you spun it right there too. Oh yeah. So really, I only have really good to the right front brakes. Maybe that's part of the reason why the truck wasn't wanting to act right either, because this side could still roll when this side was actually probably locked up and stopped. But we're gonna go ahead and get the front wheels off here and start pulling all the front suspension apart. Alex already working on it, so we can get this new front suspension on. Ready to see how crusty an 86 front suspension is? I'm sure it's crusty. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, a little crusty. Gonna get a full upgrade though. Alex over here talking about pickle forks. So we've been messing with the cotter pins. We got those out, got these loosened up. So we're gonna try to get this loosened up here so we can drop it out and get that old stock cruddy suspension out of here. Not on, man. Thank you. Alex, we got more parts. Uh -huh. Part of the rear suspension, we grabbed some lowering blocks to help this thing get a little bit lower in the rear because we're definitely gonna be lower up here in the front. Figured while we're at lunch, we might as well get some tires, huh? Yeah. All right. See if we can fit two rims in here. Without. Two rims will probably fit on the way back. We might have to put one up in the, up in the car. <laughs> try to make a whole run before everything shuts down today and then we'll have a Pretty much all night try to get this thing back together finally found a place with some 245 45 17 so we can drop these off real quick oh, that's what we need right there well ball joint tie rod yeah we'll go ball joint perfect oh we need a uh, new fix all too because i can't find mine oh there's a solid fix all right there <laughs> you know what <laughs> go ahead Yeehaw. come on that was <laughs> make it count Gonna go get some tires for the pickup. <laughs> Yeehaw! Come on. Yeehaw! <laughs> Alex is cruising the whip. <laughs> Back to get the tires. Alex figured out how good the turning radius is on this thing. <laughs> uh, 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 big guy, little car. <laughs> Skirt. Nice. Those look real good. I think that'll be perfect for the front of the truck. Leave this up. Ow. What happened? That. Yeah, you should have been in four wheel drive though. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. You slipped. You gotta lock it into four no, wheel and then you can get up them inclines. <laughs> oh my god. Here's that one. Oh, it's locked. <laughs> oh. Look at that. He's just a do-all. That's it. Got rocks all over the seat. Hey, don't mind like that. Nice interior, I know. There we go. Back hey, in somehow business. the streetcar life has to support the burnout life. This is true. <laughs> Little company car over here. I'm digging those. That's perfect. That's a lot wider. Better grippy grip in the front end, you know? Should be. Better turning turn in the burnout. Should be. We're open for. Not positive. But we're gonna find out. Just making educated guesses. Educated guesses. Yes, this is my educated burnout. hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. My burnout hypothesis says wider front tires will help it turn better. Oh, pasture right there with y'all. <laughs> 
So here's an at least little before and after. The 15s with the 205s on it. And the 17s with the 245s on it. Yeah, that looks way freaking better on this truck. Hey, Yahtzee. It. Got it. Okay. Hey, it's a heck of a thing when you got the right tools, you know? Yeah. Makes, makes right. life way easier. Yeah, watch the bucket. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, God. Oh, look, we need to get our gloves on. I'm going to get my hands dirty. That ain't going to be good. <laughs> I wonder who he got a tune from over there. Oh, hey. It's that neighborly tune. <laughs> they neighbors in their loud cars. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have anything loud around here. Oh, no. Oh, well, we got some gross junk in the garage. <laughs> it's this fully free. Now it is. Bill of Bernie. Bill of Bernie. Neighbor that just going downhill. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Well, we're making some progress now. Now, stand clear of that side. Careful, hold on. Stand back. Hopefully, the spring comes out without shooting out. Oh, oh, oh. Your face. Oh, no problem. Hey, got it. Yeah, so it had a little bit, not much. But <laughs> if that thing would come shooting out sideways before it gets that low, oh, yeah. it's dangerous. Yeah, no, that'd be bad deal. Bad situation. Dang. That's a stiff one, though. Yeah, yeah. either way. Well, making progress. Now we just got to get these... Upper and lower arms off. The first side only took us seven hours. Yeah, yeah. But that, now we learned. Got the right tools, figured it out. Now we're on to the next thing. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Oh, there it goes. Hey. Looking pretty fit over here now. This is why I left all the arms just like this, because this is the pasture side. They all have little tags, so make sure we know which one's what. So that'll be that one. So here is the factory coil over how it comes. So it's actually set up to be able to pop into a factory A-arm, which is really cool. And then when you're running the tubular A-arms, you actually need to put this little bearing in there. So we went ahead and popped this out. You pop these retaining clips, push this through. Uh, we actually use like a knife to cut the cut this off right here. So then we can slide it through. And then you end up popping this little bearing in there because the bearing is designed for this A-arm. So this actually will end up going right down in there and if you wanted to run these on a stock a arm you could use the little post and it would go right on there so it's just how it works out once you start going to coil over so super simple they send you both things makes it real easy we're gonna go ahead and get this one popped out and switched over and then we can start assembling the coil over together so we got the coil over all together here alex getting ready to set it up in the slot Kind of assembled it with the nuts on there. And then I got some hardware that comes with it. I gotta install from the top side. Right there. So now we got the coil over in there, set the hub back on it. I put the little rubber bushing down there with a the little lock nut. Everything's there. So now we got this. I'll bring this upper arm down to it. Try to get it into here. Got the jack case. We need to put a little bit of tension up on the bottom here. Get this reassembled and you got all the new locking nuts and everything else that are in the kit we'll get this thing reassembled real quick this side is completely finished up pretty much other than you know our brake line and then adjusting the shocks well what we think we're going to do is throw this tire on leave that tire or one of those other tires on this side we're going to drop it down so you guys can kind of see a difference which is not going to exactly work because that side will probably carry more but even just looking at it right here you guys can see that good couple inches Oh yeah, that's what it looked like. And now this Put a on it. Oh. is what it looks like now. Yeah, that looks way, way better. Actually, that's gonna be about perfect. I think we're gonna be, I think we're gonna have plenty. We could almost leave it slammed right like that. Since this truck doesn't have two inch drop spindles, running the coil lowers all the way down lets this truck pretty much sit as low as it possibly can without doing like a drop spindle, but I mean, that looks good. It's got good clearance here. I think it's going to have good clearance all the way around. I think we nailed the 
I think we nailed the tire size. You guys can see a little bit there. And then we just kind of ate up some of this room right in here. And then the truck's definitely, definitely sitting lower to that side, huh? Not, not crazy, but that's going to be, I think, really good. Alex is understanding that, that squat in the rear, maybe. I don't know. Some of these burnout things, I guess they, they sit pretty flat. So if we can get this truck pretty flat, I still think that's already going to be a huge difference. We're going to get it jacked back up, get everything tightened down on that side, get this side all ripped apart, throw this side all together, and then at least the suspension will pretty much be good in the front end for now. Uh, and then we can uh, go in and adjust the shocks as we want. Look how loose that is. And then this side's uh, uh, already stiff, and I don't even have the uh, shocks cranked down real crazy. So we'll get, we'll get the shocks cranked down, and it'll really stiffen up the front end of this truck. So we just did some quick measurements and it's sitting about half inch to an inch lower on this side right now, but also we went to an inch taller tire. So we're gaining all that and it's still sitting lower. So it's working out really well. And then that 17 inch wheel with the taller tire definitely made it look uh, lower too. And everything just fills up that wheel well, just looks way better. Not using these little bitty things that are meant for Clyde on. And this is at full lock on this side and it just fills up that wheel well perfect. It, it's not rubbing, it's not touching anything. It even can move. It's got a good gap everywhere, but it, I, this is kind of what I was worried about is that full lock. It would still clear and it's clearing everything. Reach in here, be able to make our adjustments on the uh, coilovers. That's perfect. Let's test out the whole suspension. So this is stock. Oh yeah. And then I put these coilovers at full lock all the way tight. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge difference. It's going to keep it way stiffer. I mean, at least it saw some movement in the body, but... It won't be completely locked down, but that, that's going to be so much better than when we do the back. And then this side, it's just going to keep everything nice and stiff. So we were looking at this. It looks real close to touching the A-arm. So we're like, is it touching? And Alex grabs some paper. And ta-da! That couldn't be any better. Sometimes the uh, bolt's a little rusted. They're the top of the shock there. So we're going to actually just have to cut through the bolt on the shock and get it cut off there because it rounded off up here and that thing's like seized on so smoking oh come on no don't go through there hey nailed it smells like a burnout in the shop now got it one down Room to go. All right, so there is the driver's side all together. I didn't show you guys that because, well, it was the exact same as the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tire put on here, get it set up in here, get this set down, then we might move on to the back. And tighten up all the bolts. We'll go through and torque everything together, but at least everything's assembled, ready to go. Come back through, grease everything as well. The whole front suspension should be good at that point, but we just want to make sure we're tightening up a few things. I did get some new brake pads today too, so we'll swap some of those out. And stuff once we get back to this and bleed the brakes and everything else i ordered just one of these belt tech lowering kits comes with the two inch blocks and u-bolts and everything and then double adjustables again in the rear and after seeing how well it worked with stiffening up the front on bernie this is going to be freaking perfect so i can't wait to get these on so i set this on tonight and see where we're at then if i go back to using what used to be on the front that's the same size tire i used to do burnouts on and if those go on, then this truck should sit pretty much perfectly flat. It's going to look a little weird with 17s in the front and 15s in the back. But hey, it's a burnout truck. Pro tip, half of a door bar out of a Chevy Camaro works perfect as a cheater bar. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that be snap the ratchet? Nah. Ugh. Get you some more cheater on there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Getting the shocks done. We already got the tops undone. As you can see, these shocks are pretty much dead. So they just, you know, sit wherever you leave them. Perfect. Just snap the right. Dang it, man. <laughs> Next. Whoa. And we just broke that. That. It snapped. Snapped off. Yep. Shoot. That ain't good. Nope. So we're going to have to find another lower plate. Well, that's going to cut us a little short on tonight because of that deal. But we're still going to get these two-inch blocks in there. And we'll get as far as we can with what we got. And two inches lower. Other than that freaking thing, this would have been super simple. <laughs> got a little, got a little lean going on. Oh yeah. Gosh, dang it. Worst case scenario tomorrow, we'll come in, cut this off, 
drill it out, get a grade eight bolt, set it in here. I can even tack weld it and stuff. All right, everyone, day two here, gonna finish up the suspension on the truck. We got the perch and we had that bolt break, so I went and got a new bolt. Gonna have to cut this one off, drill it out, and then I'm gonna tack this one in and we'll have a new bolt. That's kind of actually how the other side looks. And then, so I'm gonna get that finished up. I'm actually getting the wheels off the truck. And April's out here with her nice little gloves on. Yeah. And she's going to actually try to use some aircraft stripper. We got some of that. And then we're going to uh, paint these rear wheels black. So not only does Bernie do better burnouts, but he looks better too. So she's gonna work on some of that while I do that stuff. Ended up cutting this off, sanding it flush, and then drilling a little hole, and I'll just keep stepping it up and up and up. Already got it drilled through. You guys can see the bolts through there now. I'm gonna go ahead and weld it right here on the backside. I'll go ahead and tack it around there a couple times and then weld it. Weld a little on the outside just to make sure it's got a little support on both sides of it. And then this thing should be able to go back in. So I went ahead and just welded a washer right here to mimic kind of what was on there. Should be good to go now. Looking pretty good. I mean, they're not perfect. Plus we know that these wheels are already beat to crap from spin them on the ground. And since those tires are the ones that we should have popped and they're almost done, we're just gonna use that to uh, paint on anyway, so. Yeah, well, they're good enough, right? Yep, and then once these are popped, those will go off, so they'll they'll act as a good template. We, I mean, we'd normally tape it off if we're gonna paint a rim. Well, normally probably wouldn't spray okay, paint so a rim, but. Start spraying since I... Should be good. It's nice. There you go. All right, we'll let that kind of dry for a sec. I mean, you can work down in here too. And then we'll let the outside dry and then we'll hit it again. Oh, they'll look a little bit closer to the truck. They're not gonna be perfect, but these wheels aren't gonna last much longer anyway. We got all the drop blocks on. Everything's looking pretty good. The QA1 shocks are on. Everything looks real nice back here. We have the little 15s that used to be up front now on the back. So that's actually gonna lower it just a hair too. All right, drop her down. Let's see what we got. Woo! Look at that. Back's just a hair lower, I think now. It's in really flat though. See how soft it is, but now we'll we'll crank the suspension down and stiffen the back up, match up with the front. Still, that's still stiffer than what it used to be. <laughs> Those old shocks were all wore out. Here's the beautiful thing about double adjustables. Reach under here. We're gonna go all the way tight because we want a super tight suspension. That's where I'm gonna start on the truck and then we'll we'll go from there. We need to still come back and tighten everything down. Yeah, those are those are pretty stiff. <laughs> pretty crazy, dude. I don't think you're gonna need those freaking drop springs. No, I mean it's it's almost perfect. I ordered up some drop springs to really get it slammed. The only time we'll really probably need those is if we go to a quite a bit taller tire in the rear, then we might need to put those on so then it keeps it level. But right now with like these tires or even a little bit taller tire, this truck sits almost perfect now. It's pretty much flat. Ooh, that is looking good. So I am super stoked to try out this new suspension on Bernie. I think it's looking awesome, pretty much leveled out. And in the next one, we're gonna to toss the new converter in and get the transmission out of Salty. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you stay tuned. See you next time.